All right, so what is red scale? Usually when you take a photo, the light comes through the camera and hits the emulsion side of the film here. What we're gonna to do today is twist this film around in the canister so the light comes through the red plastic of the film before it hits the emulsion, leaving the photo looking nice and red. So the easiest way to do this is to cut the end of your film square. So what you wanna do is get a canister from a film lab. Or if you develop yourself, just keep an old canister and make sure that you've got a good amount of film left on it here so we can sticky tape on our film. And what we're gonna do is twist this film backwards, grab a little bit of sticky tape, Make sure you get both sides as well. And we're gonna put this on that way. Take it up nice, make sure it's nice and square. And then what we're gonna do is put this in a dark bag so it's not exposed to any light at all. And then in the dark bag, what we're gonna do is roll this up. Once you get to the end of the film, what you want to do is take it out of the dark bag and you cut up a nice leader like this. Make sure you have it nice and cut. So now what happens is when we load this film in here, the light's now coming through, hitting the red plastic and then hitting the emulsion, leaving us with a nice red scale film. And then you just load it as normal and shoot like you usually would. So what Brett and I are going to do today is grab this roll of Portrait 400 and split it into two different rolls and shoot it as red scale. Now I'm going to shoot mine at ISO 400. I think Brett will shoot his at ISO 200 and we'll do a comparison. So stay tuned to watch Brett and I do a little photo walk with our red scale film and see what results we get. So on today's walk, Brett's shooting a Kyocera Samurai, which is a half frame camera, and I'm shooting my Olympus XA. And we're just going to take these two cameras on a nice sunset walk. Oh yeah, <laughs> well, we, got, we can cheers now because of coronavirus. Wow. Well, in Queensland we're, we're good. Fine, no. Yeah, we're fine. We're not Victorian. One active case. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not Victoria, not America. Yeah. Jeez, they're going crazy. Nuts. Cool. So I hope you guys like those red scale shots. Um, I thought they turned out pretty good. Yeah, I liked them. Yeah. Um, different. Some good favourites in here. Kind of that um, it's real dystopian. Mm. Mm post-apocalyptic kind of vibe to it yeah and you shot yours at 200, 200. I shot mine at 400 it didn't seem to make much difference when, yeah. when you look at them side yeah. by side yours and mine yeah weird like I'd even push it even further I reckon I, I, I'd yeah. probably you know probably shoot it at 100 next yeah. time yeah some of mine yeah I would have preferred this to be a bit brighter so I think yeah 100 200 or 100 but the sky looks great yeah really yeah. good yeah. with that because we had a bit of cloud cover as yeah. well that first shot um yeah, Carol's Corner on Brunswick Street. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, I like those. Yeah. And then, 
I think the church yeah. as well, like yeah, St James Cathedral. Yeah, yours like, are really cool. The statue of Mary, and yeah. then yeah, dip teaching those that half frame is really cool. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's a fun camera to play with. Yeah, and um, you can even the even the forty nine, the fifty, throwing them up at different yeah. like the car park spots. Yeah. And, and turning them upside down the other way. I think that's a really interesting thing to do. Yeah, for some reason, in those first two shots, my XA, my Olympus XA, um, made both shots connect, so it didn't load the film properly through. All right, as first two, so they'll they'll join those shots. Um, yeah, but you're you're seeing it really good in that. Hey, you know, just a side thing. Roz, my wife, Roz, she was watching um, a doco on the fall of the Berlin Wall the other night, oh, yeah. and I'm sitting there watching. It. I'm calling all the cameras. There's, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, there's an XA. Oh, there's a bunch of F fives. Yeah. Like, <laughs> everyone, everyone like, takes like, shut up. Just watch yeah. the film. I'm just sitting there nerding out over all and the cameras. And then once the wall broke down, it's all Kiev's. <laughs> Finally, that's right. It was, yeah, it was cool. Like this guy taking all these shots on this little XA, and he had the he had the flash component bolted on. Yeah. It's kind of cool. I don't know much about the fall of the Berlin Wall. I didn't learn much. Yeah. It came down. It fell. It's been down for I don't a while. Felt got knocked down. 1989. <laughs> yeah. Storm. Was it 89? Yeah, 89. Oh, was yeah, a lot of things happened in 89. Yeah. Oh, there's a good movie about it. Would you shoot? Um, would you shoot Red Skull again? Yeah, I, I'll, I would. If I was going to a new city, I think I would. I'd only do landscapes. I think it's maybe the shot of you turned out pretty good, but I don't think I'd do it for portraits or anything like that. It's very, um, yeah, like you said, just what's the term you used? Dystopian. Dystopian. That's it. It's very yeah, I think you know. I reckon it'd be really cool. Go out west. Yeah. And some old, you know, abandoned barns and yeah, and fallen down houses. Yeah, that'd and, be really cool. And you know, fences with really barbed cool. wire and yeah, you, you know, big sky yeah. with lots of cloud. I think that would look ideal. Yeah. I've seen some on Instagram where people have shot that. Yeah. It's kind of got that vibe to it. Yeah, definitely. And I, I think I'd like to try it with medium format. Um, I don't know how you can. You can unroll it. I reckon you can stick it on backwards. You reckon? Yeah, I'm going to give it a shot. You'd have to do it in a dark bag. Yeah, do it in a dark Getting bag. it to curl the other way would be a bitch. Oh, that's true. Because you know how they're really super tight? Maybe I'll try it with my 220, because that's just two ends. Okay. Flip it over in itself. Yeah, because I've thought about that. How would you do it, like, medium format? Mm. Like, large format would be easy. You just put the negative in, put the film in the wrong yeah. way. But I think for landscapes, yeah, country landscapes would be awesome. Great to see how the red... Uh, soil and stuff would come through yeah come through white yeah you know I mean it was fun we just went around and walked around and shot the, the disappointing thing for mm. us was the fact that the sun had pretty much gone because yeah. it's winter here and and I'm always late <laughs> well cloud cover yeah. here too you know we didn't yeah. we didn't have the sun for very long it was gone the day yeah. before was an amazing sunset that yeah. lasted a while and then yeah, that'd be cool seeing a red pink sunset mm. in red mm. scar what mm. that would do to it but yeah, yeah. it was kind of cool I really enjoyed yeah. it enjoyed the experience and yeah and those graffiti shots um, the industrial style shots the ones yeah. with the graffiti wall and um, I'm trying to think of the other shots you took there was a warehouse the red warehouse, warehouse yeah um, the, oh the Vespa shots of the yours Vespa? the way that it wasn't focused on the first Vespa yeah it made it reminded me of some old like 60s Italian movie I don't right. know why okay just poor focus cool. poor film quality <laughs> like, it's very uh or 60s. Either was it, was it or deliberate? Countries. That was yeah. accidental. I'll yeah. take it. I'll pull like credit it. for that. Yeah. I think the um, it's the ratio of the aspect ratio of the half frames really nice. Yeah. yeah. It's very like six by nine ish, same scale. Yeah, and it yeah. makes you think when you're shooting two frames like I did and mm. paired them up, it makes you think about the two different frames. Yeah. And in your head, you're trying to picture how would this shot pair with the next shot. Yeah. And that's why I tried to shoot different angles of the same subject yeah, yeah. rather than move on to something else yeah uh, I've seen people do it with colours where they shoot one frame might have a pop of red in it then they look for another pop of red yeah. then the next two frames might have yellow or green or whatever and this that's, one you just did all red yeah <laughs> that's it an option <laughs> yeah but yeah pairing things up and there was a the number three mm. and there was the window the barred window mm. yeah, I was just trying to think about things that would look good together but yeah. some of them worked some of them didn't yeah. work so well I found also when scanning red scale um I'll put an example up now of, this is with my V800 scanner, my Epson, and then when I scanned it again with the Plus Tech, the colors were just so much better and so much more vibrant. I think maybe scanning on a flatbed isn't bright enough to get the full exposure out of the film. I'm not quite sure. I think it confuses, um, it's it's whatever yeah. it's using, it's software. Yeah, that Epson software. To pull the colors, yeah. it's quite confused yeah, by what I, it's seeing. When I use Silverfast with the Plus Tech, it worked really well. Yeah, yeah, because it came out more purpley. Mm. Didn't it like real, real magenta red? Whereas, 
when you did it with a plus text, as you can see, it's more of that red, orange, yeah. yellow really tone, strange. which is what you expect from Ritzka. Yeah. yeah. I still would like to expose it at a high, uh, you know, yeah. at, at 100 and get that kind of washed out red scale look. I think that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Awesome. So what are you thinking for the next video? I think we're going to get a guest in. Yeah, awesome. Surprise guest. Yeah, let's get a guest in. We say surprise because we don't know who it is yet. Well, you've got to ask <laughs> we've got them. An idea, yeah. You've got to ask him and get permission. So we've got an idea in our head. They might say no or they might not be available. Yeah. But yeah, guest, I think, because mm. people might be getting bored with just you and me. I don't know about that. I don't know. With that? I'm not getting bored with you. You getting bored yeah. with me? Two handsome lads on, Two, a, yeah. on a couch. What, what do you want? <laughs> yeah. Hey, so Perfect. got to talk about our beers, mate. Yeah, oh, yeah. What are you drinking? Um, Exit Milk Stout. And it's pretty good. It's very a nice coffee taste. I like it. Do you know where it comes from? Uh, I'm looking right now. Victoria. Okay. Coronaville. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Poor yeah. bloody Vicks. And I'm um mm. I'm drinking Burley Brewing's Big Head. It's a no carb beer. Um, and that's doctor's orders. My doctor's cut me off carbs. Oh really? Off. Yeah, I'm down to twenty carbs a day. Do they say drink carb free beer? No, 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 no. I've yeah, been off like, the beer for ages. Is it make sure you drink lots of carb free beers? Like, and then I remembered Burley Big Head has mm. it's it's a zero carb beer. So this fits in with my yeah. I was too I was too too chubby. Yeah, and I, <laughs> I don't know. I've lost I six go. kilo, which oh, is good. good, and that's since the last video. So you might have noticed. Yeah, I might have to start drinking those instead. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'm down to twenty grams of carbs a day, yeah. basically keto because. I have a bit of a problem with my insulin. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, so he just said, get your carbs down for a while. So, But it's all right. It's, it's Look, I mean, I like Burley Brewing. I like what they do. I'm not a massive fan of this mm. beer, um, but I'm glad they've done it because I can still drink beer. Yeah, nice. it's, it's a bit flavourless. I might have to try that. Get the old beer belly down. Yeah, it's not too heavy either. Yeah. I think, um, what has it got? 4.2. Oh, so awesome. it's only one standard drink. Yeah, in, a, in a bottle so you know you can have two of these and still go for a drive which is nice nice yeah alright well <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it but you can <laughs> no you can just keep your legs while driving no, no don't oh, drink it before, right. have them first then go for a drive yeah we don't have to it's not a rule is that doctor's orders <laughs> no you can you can drive without having a drink under your belt but I don't know. it's no fun otherwise I'll pack myself in a call me to Chris I don't always drink and then drive okay yeah alright Right. Just sometimes. <laughs> no, just kidding. All right. Well, we we'll see you guys next time. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Thank you. See ya. <laughs>